Hey guys, Josh, Happy Little Landscapes. Today we came back with a 16 by 20 inch canvas, painted the Devil's Tower, threw a UFO in there. Got this little road like we're gonna drive out and go meet the, the alien creatures when they land, right? Big old monster tree on the side. So if you wanna learn to paint a painting just like this one, stick around, I'll tell you what colors we need, I'll tell you what brushes we need, and we're gonna get started just like this. Bow! So today I decided to do the Devil's Tower on 16 by 20 inch canvas, 16 by 20 inch canvas, the Devil's Tower from Close Encounters of the Third Kind. If you haven't seen it, go watch it, okay? It's gonna be amazing. I've done two of them, they both sold, so I don't know why it's taking me this long to do another one. We're gonna be using a bunch of colors today, 19 different colors, okay? Colors that, you know, I've got out of this Magic Fly set, some are out of the Bob Ross set. So we're gonna uh, cre kinda create this scene. We'll have the Devil's Tower with a UFO, maybe a road kinda driving up to it through the forest. Kinda make it up as we go along like we always do. Sunlight is really irritating me on my YouTube video here, but uh, you know, stick with us. It'll be maybe about an hour, maybe an hour and fifteen minutes. We'll see if we can't knock this out and maybe use every single color that we've got on the palette here. We've got uh, cadmium yellow, this neon green, emerald green, the sky blue, sap green, uh, no, phthalo green, sap green, dark sienna, alizarin crimson, Prussian blue, midnight black, titanium white, bright red, Indian yellow, yellow ochre, this kind of rose pink color violet, purple, uh, gray, and then silver, which looks to have these little like glitter specks in it. So might look really neat on the UFO, might look crap, but we're gonna find out. So I'm gonna do a really wicked kind of sky. If our, if our Devil's Tower, let's say it's right in the center or maybe kind of off center, I wanna have one side darker than the other side. So why don't we put our sunset -y sky over here and then this side will be a little bit darker. All right, we'll kind of plan out at least the at least the sky bit, okay? So just kind of come in, just so wicked looking, you know, we're just literally dropping on color. To start, we use Bob Ross liquid white, okay? Just want to be able to see the, the ridges of your fingerprint. If you've got too much, it's not going to work as well. If you don't have enough, you're just going to have these real dark splotches of color that just won't blend for you. Get some yellow ochre, kind of put it up in here, give us a little buffer. This kind of goldish color, yellow ochre, it's really nice. We'll grab a little snag of our titanium white right here in the middle, just to make this area real bright. We've got our Indian yellow, our yellow ochre. Not really blending them, just kind of getting them onto the canvas for right now, okay? Got our bright red, maybe. Maybe get a streak of bright red down through the middle. You never know. You just make it up. Make it up how you want. Again, we always finish the sides, guys, right? My YouTube guys, what do we always say? Finish the sides, make a mess, right here on the apron. Apron available on sale uh, on Etsy, on my Etsy shop. Etsy.com slash shop slash happy landscape art. And before I forget, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Uh, I'll post the link eventually for, for the Facebook guys, but subscribe to my channel. Free videos twice a week. And uh, why don't let's throw some of this pink up in the sky, see what this stuff looks like. It's kind of like crimson-y, maybe a couple little bits here and there. Nothing too nuts. But subscribe to my channel and, uh, you know, free videos twice a week. Can't beat that deal. Let's get this purple. We got the crimson and the blue mixed together. Maybe a little bit of blue down here. Just want to have these differences in color, okay? Don't worry about the blue kind of mixing with the yellow down here. It's most likely going to be covered by our trees or our mountains, stuff like that. A little bit of our midnight black. We can throw the black in with the blue. This nice kind of stormy sky. A little bit of blue and purple up here. The crimson. All right. Just literally throw it on because you never know what's going to be covered. You never know what it's going to look like until you do it. So do it. Try, try something new. Try something you haven't done before. Don't just copy. Make it up on your own, right? Bob always said, you know, we're just trying to show you, we're not, we're not doing any stenciling here, we're not doing anything like that, just trying to show you the techniques that you need, and then we're gonna set you loose on the work, right? So don't copy. Don't do the same thing over and over and over again. Try something new, try a different color in the sky. Try you know, a different kind of, you know, don't just paint the same mountains, don't paint the same trees all the time. Try something new. I want to 
to do here is just put a little bit more red in right here. That way our blue doesn't kind of mix in with the yellow that we want to keep bright up here. So a little bit of red, a little bit of blue. Gonna wash our brushes. I use Jasco brush cleaner. You can use low odor mineral spirits. You can use Dawn dishwashing liquid and, and water. Got a little beater bucket. Makes it hard to hear. All right, it's just got a golf ball basket down in the bottom of it. And that way I can beat the brush save the paint from splattering everywhere across the house, right? So whenever you see me dip out of frame, clean my brushes. I usually edit a lot of that out for the YouTube videos so you don't have to sit here and just watch me clean brushes all day. Dab them off on a paper towel. And let's get nuts, right? And come in with our two inch brush, just crisscross in fast motion, crisscross strokes with our two inch brush and just blending our lightest area first, right? And then once I come out here into the dark area, don't want to go too far back into that lighter area or it's going to get nasty real quick. You won't have a light area anymore. You're just going to have this dark everywhere, which isn't really what we want. All right, at least in this painting, we want to keep this light area in there. Okay. If you don't already like my Facebook page, like it. Facebook.com slash happy landscape art. Okay. Or search at happy landscape art. You can go find me on Instagram at happy little landscapes. And of course, shop my store, etsy.com slash shop slash happy landscape art. Okay, the more paintings you guys buy, the more new canvases I can buy and create, you know, new videos for you. Without that, it starts getting very tight, okay? You guys gotta go support me so I can keep bringing new videos to you. Even if it's buying a print for $20 or a, a pillow for $30 or you know a sticker, $2, $3 for a sticker, whatever it is, go buy something. That way I'll be able to buy more canvases and bring you guys more videos, okay? Let's see, we'll take a step back. Got our soft little blended sky in here. Only really worrying about this area staying nice and bright, okay? The rest of it, no big deal. We're gonna cover over it anyway. Wash this sucker one more time. I'm a painter on a budget. I've only got one set of the one and two inch brush, okay? I should probably invest and get another one and two inch brush. Might make the videos go a little bit quicker, but like I said, for the YouTube videos, we edit a lot of this stuff out, and that way you don't have to sit there and watch. Okay, we're gonna grab our small palette knife right now. Just kind of clear up those bits and clear up the areas where we scrape. We're gonna don't have a lot of room today, so we're trying to keep it all neat. Okay, gotta keep the palette neat. Try not to stick my thumb down in this silver is gonna be the hard, the hardest part about painting today. All right, we're gonna get some blue, crimson, maybe a little bit of the dark sienna. Shoot, we throw in throw in some of that phthalo green color. Maybe a little bit of the sap green color. Just mix it all up together. You just want a nice dark, nice dark pile of paint, right? We don't need a lot of paint. The, the Devil's Tower is just gonna be kind of one singular mountain kind of hanging off out in the distance. We'll have some trees that we'll end up making different colors for and stuff like that. But for right now, just need a little bit. And I'm thinking we should probably throw them here and leave room for our UFO. Maybe throw a tree up over the UFO or throw a tree over this side. We'll, we'll figure it out. The Devil's Tower is a very specific shape, though. I can't call it the Devil's Tower unless it looks like the Devil's Tower. I only looked at the picture once. Okay, so we're going to try to remember what the hell it looks like without staring at the picture because now I can't even look at it. My phone is doing a live video on Facebook right now. Okay, so I'm thinking it's got this flat top to it. Right, and then it kind of comes down on this angle, just like that. All right, same thing, down on an angle. Don't want it to be too skinny, otherwise it's not going to look right. Okay, try to mush all this paint on here. Try to worry just about that top edge, just about the outside line is all we want to keep. You know, that's all we're really worried about. All the stuff down in here we can end up covering up, okay? I had a cool idea about 
You know, the last couple Devil's Towers paintings that I painted, they were all in the forest, right? But we've been doing a lot of road paintings, and uh, I figured it would kind of look cool if there was a road leading up to the Devil's Tower. So we'll kind of figure it out. Maybe Richard Dreyfuss will kind of inspire us. It's going to make me want to watch that movie again. If you guys haven't seen the movie, go watch Close Encounters of the Third Kind. It's kind of cheesy for being an 80s movie, but or 70s movie. It might have been even late 70s, but... It's good. If you like aliens and shit, go watch Close Encounters of the Third Kind. If you really want to crap your pants, go watch Close Encounters of the Fourth Kind. Okay? That thing will make you crap your pants. Especially if you believe in aliens and abductions. <laughs> That's a scary movie. I'm not afraid. Not ashamed to admit. But that is a scary movie. You know what we didn't do? We didn't throw any clouds in, guys. I get so worried about talking all the time. We forget to throw our clouds in, okay? So I'm going to show you what you can do to kind of go backwards and get some clouds in here. Alright, in the meantime, I'm going to get a little bit of the purple and the blue. Just kind of dab my brush right into these, uh, sorry, the crimson and the blue. We're going to make our own little purple. Just kind of dab the brush in there. And then we can go off and make like these, you know, normally do it with a, with a fan brush. You can do it with a one inch brush. You can do it with whatever you want. Maybe there's one that comes across over there. It's real light. All right, we're gonna end up blending these out anyway. Then we got this big sucker who comes in. And you never know, you can always cover it. You can do whatever you want. You can get it a red up here so it'll shine a show against that purpley color. You just make your own, your own sort of clouds, okay? Don't have to look like a cloud, doesn't have to look like mine. Doesn't have to look at all like mine. There's no specified shape for a cloud. You kind of make up your own as you see fit. Okay, we're going to come in and just do our little circles, little patented circles, right? Kind of just fogging, foggying up those clouds. If that's a word. We make up our own words around here. It doesn't matter. If it's not a real word, that's fine. Let's do our own thing. All right, you can see I came up, kind of grabbed a little bit of that uh, Devil's Tower bit, so we'll just make it a little bit taller. It's literally no big deal. No big deal. Happy little accidents, right? Maybe this guy kind of wraps around and comes again into there. You just kind of mix it, and then you just spin them out until they're nice and soft, okay? You don't want anything sticking off the canvas. Doesn't want to be textured up in the clouds. They're not going to like you if they're textured up there. Again, you can do this with a fan brush. Son of a bee, already into the into the paint. I got to remember how to hold this sucker now that we have so many colors on there. You can do this with a fan brush. You can do it with a one-inch brush or a palette knife. Whatever you think, you, know, you can do. Come in here, just kind of stay on top of those clouds. Just kind of muddy it up, right? Our fan brush is going to get a little, it's going to pick up a little bit of color from the, the clouds or the shadows, right? So just dab it off on a paper towel, come back in. You don't want them to be super thick, right? You want some kind of thickness up there. They don't need to be globby. It's one of my other words I like to use. They don't have to be globby, but you want them to, you know, not be super light, because if we blend them away with our little one inch brush, they'll literally disappear. So if you don't have enough paint on there to kind of leave some white left over, watch, we'll come right across our Devil's Tower just like that. There's not enough paint up here, and you go to start making our little circles, and you push too hard, you're going to blend it all away. Okay, so don't do that. There we go. Just, all we're doing is just disturbing the paint, right? Not really even, bit, just barely, like a whisper. Just barely touching it. Barely touching. All right, because all we want to do is just kind of disturb what it looked like when we first put it on there. Take a little bit more, maybe there's a, just a little floater in there. Just come back in and just mess with it. Play with it till you like it, right guys? That's what I always say. Play with it until you like it. Swipe up, try to miss our Devil's Tower, come up, and we're going to come to the side. Okay? Come to the side, one side only on this side, one side only on that side. And then we can come.
come back in and fix the top of our devil's tower. Remember, it wants to be flat up there. So don't put a peak on it. And now we've kind of pushed all these clouds back behind our, our devil's tower, even though we forgot to do it initially, right? A little bit more white underneath here. You can even just blend it with your fan brush. If you've got a, a light enough touch, right? Just blend it away with that fan brush. And then to take out all those little circular brush marks, we just swipe it up just very lightly, just barely touching it, right? We're not trying to push, we're not trying to mush it. Just barely touching and coming to the side. And that'll kind of flatten them. It'll pull little bits of paint over where it's thicker and give it this real cool look, okay? Like a windswept cloud kind of look. Let's wash these suckers off real quick. Etsy.com slash shop slash happy landscape bar. You can get the apron and see how dirty you can get it. I'd love to see pictures of how dirty you can get these, you guys. I really would. Okay, we're gonna come in here. I'm just gonna kind of make just some fog at the bottom of our Devil's Tower here. Not in a straight line across. Just a little bit of fog, right? Now you can't really tell where the bottom of it is, right? And that's what we're looking for. And the thing about some of a bitch, it's the second time with this damn silver paint. Should have put it in a different spot. Really should have put it in a different spot. Okay. Now, for the Devil's Tower, it's super textured when you look at it in real life. It's got these big grooves that kind of go down the side of it. So in order to do that, we're just going to start throwing colors on with our, our palette knife, okay? So maybe on, a, on the darker side, we'll put just some straight up dark sienna, right? Just kind of throw it down. The more you get down to the bottom, the more we're going to curve it, okay? Maybe a little bit of that mixture that we made to create the mountain, the tower, right? So that black, green, all that dark stuff, right? You come down like that. Let's say that about that half of it is in the, the shadow, okay? Nice and thick, nice and textured. You can see it from the sides, okay? Then we're going to come in. Let's put a little bit more brown in there. Then we can come back in later and add our, our little grooves, okay? But for right now, if it doesn't do it naturally, we can always come back in and add the grooves. You can come down with your knife and just make them how you want them. And then for the front, I really found out after doing it a couple times that we can just start mixing all these different light colors along with this brown, right? We're gonna put the brown down initially, the dark sienna, Whatever, whatever color you got, that you can use Van Dyke brown, you can use dark sienna, you can use burnt umber or raw umber, whatever kind of brown color you have, okay? We're gonna wipe that off. And we're gonna come back in with our yellows and reds, okay? You're like, yellow and red, what? No, trust, trust me, it starts to look really cool. Okay, we're not gonna do it too many times over the same area, right? We're gonna kill all these breaks. And how we're getting it to break like this is we're holding the knife at the same angle of the canvas, okay? Mine's at like, I don't know, about 10 degrees pitched backwards. If yours is on a 45 degree, hold it on a 45. If it's flat onto the table, hold it flat against the table. And we hold our knives basically with just these two fingers in the front and the rest are there to just kind of balance it, right? Put the pinky on the end like you're drinking tea. Gotta be sophisticated up around here. Take some of that red and throw it in there. You get these cool little light play tricks. And a bit of the yellow ochre. The yellow ochre is what really stands it out against this brown. And remember, we want to have a dark side and we want to have a light side, so don't go crazy and cover the whole thing. Right? Every so often you can take a little bit of yellow ochre and throw it over here on the side. right? Just the littlest bit, though. You only want to have it dark. Maybe some of it's covered. You know what I mean? Some of it isn't. Again, it's real textured, real thick. Get some of that orange. Remember, we're, all we're worried about is just staying inside our outline, right? Maybe up here, we didn't get it on the top. So just come down, kind of mix those oranges. Well, it's not even orange, it's Indian yellow and yellow ochre. It just looks orange until you start throwing it up there. 
right, throw that down. <clears throat> Need a little bit of the red right on the edge. Just kind of mix it until you like it, right? That's all we ever do. We play with crap until we think it looks good. And once it looks good, we stop. Again, the more and more you go over it, right, the more you're going to smash all those little breaks. Okay, and then take a step back and look at it. Maybe we got too much yellow over here, so we'll just kind of throw some dark on it. Until we have just the side of it in the shadow, okay? Maybe up here, one of my favorite bits. And that's, <laughs> that's the hard part about painting. You have these, you're like, oh, that, that one swipe looked really cool. And then you have to go back over and cover it. And it just, it just breaks your heart every time. Every time. At least it does mine. You heartless bastards. I don't know about you guys. But it does to me. Okay? Now to make those little grooves, we can take the knife and instead of, you know, with a large flat edge, we're holding it on the side and pulling it down. And that way it kind of pulls off a bit of that. Yeah, it looks good. In the camera. We leave like a little line down the side, right? Again, the Devil's Tower, there's like a, a legend about it where the there was like a there was an Indian up on the top and this huge bear was trying to claw its way up to the top of the tower. And that's how it got these marks apparently. Take a bit of our yellows and oranges and just come down, just kind of create these drag marks down, okay? Now we've got this super textured Devil's Tower. Looks fantastic on the camera. What's it look like on the Facebook camera? Oh, that looks great. Look at that. That looks great. There's a bit of red up here that's just too red for me. So we're going to cover over him. Maybe throw some yellow ochre up here. Now we've got it, guys. We've got it. Very, very cool looking. I like that. Okay, what I'm going to do now is kind of throw some white down around the bottom. You know, Josh, there's no snow in this painting, right? That's not what it's for. You guys ever painted with me before? You know we like fog. I gotta make the fog. Gotta have something to separate where our next dark section is gonna come through, right? So, gotta throw that fog in, okay? Now we got our two inch brush. Same thing we're gonna do like we do on the regular mountains where we're going in the same angles, right? Just gonna tap, kind of, come up and just tap it down. Not on a straight line, right? These sides are going this way. You can see my brush kind of rotating. These sides will be turning this way, so the brush is gonna rotate this way. Right? And all that's doing is mixing in these darker colors with the white. We're just getting this area of fog. We want to cover all the white bits. Right? And we've got almost like this cloud is rolling over the bottom of our devil's tower. Swipe it up a little bit. Again, you can see what I'm doing. We're going up in this direction, then we're straight, then we're coming up in this direction, right? Just matching those angles. Taking our little two-inch brush, creating this fog, okay? Yeah, I've never... That's the third time. This is going in the blooper reel. Third time we've gone into the silver. I'm not even holding it like that anymore. I might just end up moving it over here. That's what I'm going to do. Take the silver... Put it over there. Then I can grab this sucker where I want to grab it. Never painted it like this before, right? It's always been on a on a horizontal canvas where I've got, you know, forest and all this other stuff. So even though we've painted the tower before, we've never painted it like this. I don't think gonna look neater. If we take just a little roll of paint and try to go down those little lines of that dark paint, and then we'll really create these kind of crevices as they come down, right? Because you got these, the lights trying to reach and get into those shadows, right? Can't reach them all. So we'll create these little drag marks and crevices and fill it in with that dark paint. Same kind of paint we made the mountain with. Same color. I don't want to do too many. Now it's still real thick, real textured. Now we'll kind of decide what the heck else we're going to do. It's probably the best looking one I've done, to, you know, in regards to the shape, the shape of the dang thing. I like the sky too in this one. 
Not too stormy, not too thick, full of clouds, but there they are. You know what? They're not stormy enough for me. You guys know me. I like my stormy skies and my colorful clouds, right? So we're going to take the blue, mainly the blue, right? Maybe let's throw another blue, we'll throw a blue guy up here. Literally doesn't matter what you do with clouds. They end up looking fantastic, right? Just with those little extra colors of blue up in there, it already's looking awesome. Need a different fan brush. Maybe go into our yellows and reds over here, just the smallest bit. Kind of touch in a little bit of that yellowy color, yellowy orangish color into our clouds, okay? And we'll see what it looks like. If it doesn't look good, then we just kind of blend it out. That's literally it. Start over. All right, gotta be brave though. Don't get too close to all this thick paint. Right, now we've got these just these little touches of color into our clouds, like the light's kind of reflecting off of it. And in this instance, I like it. Right? I'm gonna throw some blue underneath this guy, like it's a bottom of the clouds, all covered in this shadowy color, right? Do, 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 do. What you gotta do? Just kind of play with it until when? Until you like it. Because that's what I always say. Play with it until you like the way that it looks. Doesn't matter what other people think. Doesn't matter how theirs looked. Or even how mine looks. Doesn't matter how mine looks. You might not like the way that I'm doing mine. So paint it the way you want to do it, okay? If you don't like it, you'll have this negative attitude about it. And then the universe is going to pick up on your attitude and it's going to go, fine, we'll make everyone else hate it too then. Alright? I love just throwing these dark bits of blue in there every so often. You don't want to overdo it. It starts looking really cool. You don't want to overdo. Okay, now we've got this beautiful, colorful sky right up in there. You can imagine maybe the sun's over here or maybe it's behind there. We could have thrown a sun in if we wanted to, but we didn't. We didn't do it this time. Okay? All right, now we're going to make up a whole bunch of color for our, our forest that's going to come in, right? Let's throw some of the green in there, too. So we did crimson, black, and blue. A little bit of the saffron. Again, we just want it to look black. The, the pile of paint will look black, okay? So let it look black. Again, that's the fourth time I've touched that dang silver. Even though I moved it over to here, I still touch it somewhere. Okay, we're going to come in, we're going to grab our fan brush, start making some forest out of these suckers here. Just wiggling it down, right? Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Yeah, I'm stupid. I'm stupid. It's okay to laugh. You can laugh at me. It's fine. All right, we're going to take these. I'm just going to start bouncing in some, some bits of forest. All right, we kind of left that little bit underneath the blue with the yellow of the sky and everything. It's one thing that Bob never said when he was painting is where to start. You know what I mean? He just threw it up there, and then I would go and I'd go, oh, and then you'd wonder why it didn't look the same. You want to leave, you know, these little touches of differences in color in there. And it's something, especially when he was making his mountains, his normal looking mountains, that he wouldn't tell you, but he would always have this bit of light color up in there. Flip our brush over when you start running out of paint. You just want to have this bit of far off forest all filled in down around the bottom and these nice sharp tops to it. Okay, then we're going to come back in and change the color and uh, do another set as well. All right, the more and more you go up into your your thick paint, the more muddied up all this is going to get. So be careful. Right, we're going to have these nice sharp points. It's going to be nice and dark so they'll bounce off against that kind of fog that we created, which is why we did that, right? Like that. I'm going to go around the side over here. Because we always finish the sides, guys. All the time. So so great about painting to me, too, is you can just throw this mess of, of hash marks against there. And it'll look like trees. It's awesome. 
such a cool technique. Right? And swipe up all these trees so they become nice and faded off in the distance. And then we're going to come in, you know what you can do too? Let's get a little bit of that liquid white that's down here on our canvas still. And don't worry about dropping any color down here or anything. And we can come back in, and just with that liquid white and our little tapping motion, we create this fog, right? A little bit more. We create this foggy look just out of the tapping of the brush. Right? Again, we didn't come in on a straight line. Ours kind of goes down, up, and down, and up over here. You don't want to have it just straight across the whole thing, okay? Come in, and again, don't worry about what's underneath until we get down there, right? You can do you can literally fix whatever. So don't worry about stuff underneath. We can blend it all out with this color and then poof, all those little imperfections are gone, okay? It's starting to look really good. It's starting to look really good. You guys are like, well, what about the UFO? I always come in and do that at the end, all right? And that way, if you don't want to paint a UFO in your scene, you don't have to. You can do the entire scene with me right here. And then when we get to the UFO bit, you just zip to the end where all the bloopers are and then you sit and laugh at me and it's fun, all right? All right. Time. What's this sucker looking like? That is looking pretty good, you guys. We leave these foggy areas down here so our next set of trees can bounce off of those. And then we're going to fog those ones up again. And then I'll show you. It'll look like we're driving off with this road into the fog, okay? <clears throat> now for those ones, they have to be a different color than, you know, the ones we just created. So... Let's get the blue and the crimson, and then we'll throw two of those green colors in there. You throw the phthalo green in, you can throw the sap green. If you've got the magic fly set like I have, damn this light. There we go. <laughs> then you can, uh, you can throw the, uh, the neon green in there. If not, it's no big deal. No big deal. We'll take some of our white, throw it in, and then we'll see what kind of color we have created, right? We got this nice, might have put too much white in there actually. Kind of pinkish, reddish. I need to get some more green out of the box. There's some yellow in the green in there. There we go. Now we got these greener looking trees. All right, big old globby mess of paint, okay? Come back in with that same big old fan brush. <coughs> Woo! Get a little sneeze action. Good thing I'm by myself. Don't have to wear my mask. Alright. Now we'll come in over here. Maybe these guys sit a little bit taller and you can see that there's a difference in the color of these trees, okay? They're a little bit closer so they're a little bit greener than the ones further off in the distance. Right, we're staying down in our fog so you can see Pass these trees into the foggy bit of the next ones, right? Come up like this. Finish our sides, because we always do. We're just kind of poking down at it. That's all we're doing is poking down at these trees. Right? Just kind of at an angle, 45 degree angle, poke down. I'm going to have a lot of paint on your brush for this. Okay. There we go, there we go, there we go. You can do it without even looking. Just be like, doesn't matter. The bottom can be straight, you know what I mean, but we want the top to be like a little heartbeat monitor. That's how I like to describe it anyway. Okay, we'll take these trees again, you know, just very lightly pull up, right? Don't want to use a whole lot. Didn't even really get a whole lot of green on the brush. Come back in, just fog it up. Maybe we'll make the fog a little bit higher on this one. Maybe come down, and we'll start going up the hill again, right? Just like so, nice and soft. Okay, now we've got these two little different bits of forest that are kind of crisscrossing in front of each other. You know, it might look neat too is if we take a bit of that dark color just throw in some tree trunks every so often because now these ones are getting close enough up to us that 
you know, they look like they've got a little bit more definition to them. All right, so just different heights. Doesn't matter, there's thousands of trees back in there. All right, stay on those taller ones that we did. Just throw some of that color in there. All over the place. Scrape them up, you do whatever you want to do. However you want to make it look. All right, we'll do that more of that dark color. We can finish off over here. And we'll throw some brown ones in there. There we go. Got these different colors of trees. Some darker bits of trunks, all we're looking for. Alright. Then you may not like them. And in which case, you can just swipe up again and it'll look like a different set of trees in there. What's it look like in the camera? Doesn't look bad. Doesn't look bad. Alright, go like that. Scrape them up however you want. You can scrape them, you can kind of drag them down on the side, or on the sides of the knife, whatever you want to do. Make them as tall as you want, as, as small as you want. Totally up to you. That will take them just so light, even lighter than before. I'm just going to drag those up just a little bit. Just a little. You can even see we got some crimson and brown ones in there too. Make our little circles of our fog. Yeah, yeah. Right on the bottom. Wash those brushes. <laughs> Let's get rid of this one soon. It does not want to play ball for very much longer. Okay, we're going to save this dark green pile because we might use it for some shadows or something later. Maybe. We can get our black and our blue. A little bit of crimson, right? Mostly black and blue. A little bit of crimson. And that's going to come up with the perfect asphalt color. Okay. Throw some of this blue in there too. Why not? Why not? All right, we got all these colors. We might as well try to use them. Okay. Now, in my mind, right, there might be a, a road kind of cutting off through this forest. So we'll get our fan brush. Again, we're going to wiggle it down. And then, who knows, maybe it starts down here. You want to be real wide when you're making this road. It's straight, right? We're basically making a little, little pyramid up here. Nice little pyramidal shape, okay? And we're gonna adjust the canvas. Sit it up on that lip so I can really get to the bottom. All right, we're not gonna finish our road right now. This is just a kind of a rudimentary shape of what it's gonna look like, and then we can fill it in later. I right, got that up there, got that up there. Now let's worry about what's off the side of our road. Okay, so we can take some of that color, same kind of road color, we'll just make it, make it a little bit darker with the black. And then we'll see what we look like here. Make a couple little baby evergreens. You guys know me, I like painting the upward style ones, right? Where they go up, you push it up against the canvas using just the corner versus these downward sagging suckers that just look sad. If you do them like this, and you're pushing down, they just look sad to me. I don't know why. They didn't get, they didn't get enough water, so they're just, just sagging down. All right, before we get too far ahead of ourselves, since we got all of our shadows going this way, right? light coming from here, just pull these over. Maybe that guy's on the road. And we got another little bit bigger of a one over here. And I like to push up. Just 
just makes them look more alive to me. Take that guy, and he lives over here too. Maybe he lives down on a hill. Make him on a little hill just by pulling in a diagonal. You can see how we're flipping the knife, uh, flipping the brush, and he lives over on a hill. Right, a little bit taller, a little bit smaller. In the meantime, why don't we get our fog going back here and we can cover over it. A little fog action. Fix our road. Always come back and fix the road. When I'm pulling and making this road, you see I'm going from the same spot, but we're ending up at a different spot, right? Start up in the top, coming down, coming down, coming down. And that way you get these little lines that you guys might not be able to see, but you can see them up close, of how the road would look in real life, okay? Why don't we go and we'll highlight these trees in the back and then we can start playing around with the, the rest of the stuff, okay? So let's go with this guy. Oh wait, he's a downward facing one. Damn guy. Right. Don't want to cover up all the shadows. Get about halfway down, we'll stop on him because we'll put something else in there. Wipe off that dark paint. It's going to dull it down. It's going to dull our very bright colors down. Every time we touch one of these dark shadows, it's going to naturally make it duller. Or more dull, however you would say. Okay, just like so. Those two really bright trees off in the distance, right? I like it. I like the way that looks. I like it a lot. Okay, maybe we'll take some, some of that dark color, some blue, some crimson, just all on the brush right here. And pull it down all in one direction, right? Tap it in. And then come over here, maybe we'll make some some bushes that live out in front of those guys. Wash that brush. How long have we been painting for? About 45? We might get it in under an hour. Okay, we're gonna get some of that uh, liquid white. I'm gonna try this pinky color out here. I'm gonna bounce it in. All right, we pulled it down one direction, then we kind of bounce it in and leave this kind of textured feel to it. Okay, maybe the pinky guy lives up here. Don't wanna do too much. Yeah, it starts looking really neat, and then you overdo what it is, okay? And you'll smash all those cool little, those cool little textured areas where it's kind of creating it on its own, right? So I'm going to come in with this guy, and he can be purple. And again, we're not trying to cover everything. Got a little bit of white in there. Let's get purple with some white. Another shade of purple. Differences, right? Differences in your color. That's what you're looking for. You want the differences in the colors. A little white on that guy. We'll come over here and then we'll get to different, different kind of color green for this guy. Ooh, that's that guy. Sea green, bluish. I like that. Let's grab some of that Indian yellow too. Maybe some of this cat yellow over here. Just kind of brighten it up. And we're going to come in again. Trees don't have to look the same. They don't all have to be the same shape. They don't all have to be symmetrical. Okay? Let me take them away. Scrape in some sticks on these guys. Little bits that live underneath. Maybe getting ahead of ourselves, but it's all good. Throw those out that way. I like how that little bit of green, or the pink, is kind of falling over the road a bit. Throw another little bush. 
push in over here. And again, you can come over your road, whatever you need to do, because you can always go back and fix it. You can always fix the road. the road just as easy as that okay nothing to it figure out which brush we use for which thing over here all right let's do another let's do another big old tree over here mm, grab some of that kind of sea green color for the tree shadow here this guy will be a little bit taller, a little bit closer, but real thick and textured, okay? You gotta have it thick and textured, otherwise we have nothing for our highlights to kind of grip onto. Alright, nice and thick. Fill that sucker in. We kind of got this little purple bush kind of behind it, which is neat. kind of mix them back and forth until you like the way that they look. Which is what I say about everything, right? Just work with it until you like the way that it looks. Otherwise, you just aren't going to like it. These little micro-sized fan brushes start filling up very quickly with that dark paint. Every time we touch this dark paint with the light paint, it's going to want to change the color of our brush. Right? And then we won't have as many little cool little details and stuff. Definitely won't be as bright, i tell you that. It's kind of neat. We got our fog back there all around. We can throw something else in front of this guy. Maybe we'll put a big tree hanging off the side. And we'll put a tree off of this. Let's do it over here. All right, what are we going to do on the bottom then? If we're going to do a tree over there, maybe we'll have one big giant bush that sits right here. A bunch of different colors in it. I like that. I like that idea. Alright, this thing lives on a hill. Might as well give my little friend. If we're not going to have anything else over here, then we'll give my little friend a, a little friend to hang out with. Because everybody needs a friend, right? Everybody needs a friend. I'll do it over here for the buyer. If you want to see what it looks like on the sides, guess what? But you gotta buy it. You gotta buy it. And then you can see. If you want to see it? You gotta buy it. Wash these purples off of this brush. put some big giant tree over there. Maybe a bit of a bush down underneath here. Another tree, big arm, big 20 inch tree we got. And then we'll put some giant bushes over here. What I'll do is maybe take a little bit of that dark color and just pull it out underneath these guys. There's shadows all over the place in this one. We want to have it out like that. I really like how that one kind of over the side. And if we take this, kind of twist it as we're pulling it up, it looks like it's turning off into the fog. Now Richard Dreyfus can go take a drive until he sneaks onto the base, right? Our branches 
All you gotta do. That's how your tree comes to life. You start making these branches. You can always throw the shadow up there. Until you start making the branches, it may not look like a tree to some people. Do the sides for the buyer, right? Take the tops, scrape them in, scrape in a bit of tree trunk to the top there. Not in the same places on each one. All right, but for the people that are looking for the details, they will see it. Oh yeah, baby. Just like that. Okay? Put this giant bush in over here. We're gonna need a lot of thick textured paint for this sucker. Alright, he's gonna live right in there. Right in there. You need to pull him over down around the bottom. He's got a big old shadow he's casting. Alright, real thick, real textured. And this kind of odd looking shape, okay? Doesn't need to be doesn't need to really look like a a bush. Doesn't have to have a certain shape. You just want this kind of mess of shadow down there. Now to decide how we're going to highlight them, right? How are we going to highlight them, Josh? Well, that's a good stinking question, if you ask me. I'm going to do a bit of green. Again, you want to leave areas of dark in between. You don't want to go over the same thing too many times because you'll lose these cool little things that the brush kind of does on its own. I'll throw that purple in there. I like that purpley color. Okay, nice little bit of purple. We'll do that pink. Do the pink that's down here around the bottom. Right? Again, we can pull out whatever we don't want. A little pink on the side for the buyer. Fantastic if you ask me. I'm sure you're asking me. Some of these things are just a bit too too up in my face. I'm just gonna soften them down a little bit. Soften them. Maybe we'll add a little bit of shadow to our fog back in there, right? Now we can't really tell what the heck's going on. I'm gonna use show you guys how to make up a cool looking brown. Okay, we'll get some of that crimson and then some of the green. Just kind of mix these up until they turn into this kind of orangey brown color. What the heck is that? There we go. This orangey brownish color and then we'll come in up here and just be like, ah, guys, Josh, what did you do? It's looking so good and you made this gigantic mark on the whole canvas. Oh no. All right, trust me guys. Trust in me. Okay. We can go in and kind of really highlight him with some palette knives and big thick stuff. And that guy comes over there. Got just branches come out everywhere on the sucker. And so for that, we're going to switch to our our uh, the liner brush. Just going to our paint thinner a couple times. Into our liner brush, we want it really thick, like it's just going to fall off of our canvas. Okay. And then we can come back in and just start making branches. Branch after branch after branch. Branch, my man. Right, come over here. Maybe that one comes in 
front. Maybe it's got a bit over there. Maybe this guy comes up and he just goes over. Or he turns up that way. Totally up to you how you want it to look. Right? Like I always say, play with it until you like the way that it looks. Now we've got this kind of tree reaching up for our UFO that's not even in there yet. Those, maybe that one comes in front. Don't worry about covering over your mountain, okay? That's what we put it there for, so we can cover over it. You gotta have stuff that shows that it's in front and that that's behind, all right? Don't put all your branches in the same spot either. And it comes down and just dips in front of that thing right there. Just comes down, dips in front. Got this other branch coming off the side. Maybe this one goes down there. And you just sit and play with this sucker until you like the way that it looks for the thousandth time that I've said that. It comes in front of that branch. Branch, my man! Don't come off the same spots of your tree, okay? If you're doing this branch, you know, you don't want to come out of the same areas of both your little branches that come off the side. It just look like a Y or a V. And that's not necessarily what we want it to look like. There we go. Some of these big, thick branches, they come off and just go off, disappear off the side of the canvas. Can't even see them. Can't even see them anymore. All these are twisting and just all over each other. I like the way that's coming out, actually. The more paint thinner you have on your brush, the sharper the tips of your branches are going to be. Right? Just kind of mix it into that stuff and then throw out these wicked sharp little branches. You can do as many as you want, you can do as few as you want, depending on what you're going for. You, know, you could take these and just cover all over them with some, some foliage or leaves or whatever. You take one and you shoot it right out the side right there, Come right across that tree. Push it back, right? him back and away. He's behind. Right, but if you got big thick branches out on the on the end, gotta have a big thick part of your tree that it's hanging on to, okay? Gotta have it. Okay, we can even take this guy. Why not? He's got a couple he's got a couple leaves to live on this guy. Right, just a couple. We just use our fan brush to create these. Just with both those dark colors that we have, right? Thinking about how the tree would look, how those leaves would be in there, different layers of what it's gonna look like. Right, you wanna leave some of those branches in there. And I'll leave some of them in. Not everything has to be covered, okay? We'll over finish the edges. There we go. Again, it can look however you want it to look. And we can come back in. Every so often on our brightest little ones out around the sunset, we kind of create some of these kind of greenish branches, right? There we go. And then we can change color because we have all these dang greens. Might as well use them. Some 
these guys are a little bit darker color. Again, we're not covering everything. You want to have those shadows back there. Do not want to cover them all. You can use whatever brush you want to use. You don't have to use a fan brush to do it all. You know what I mean? You can use whatever you want to use. The cool thing about the fan brush is you can change the shape just by rotating the brush, you know what I mean? It doesn't all have to be this fan brush shape that we have up there. So that other green color, the darker green that we had made. Just start putting in different bits everywhere you go. And you can create you know, this illusion you want. There's a bit of purple on these guys. Just every so often. A bit of purple, a bit of pink. Why not? So that's my tree. Do whatever I want with my tree. Right? You can do whatever you want with your tree. There's a bit of blue shadows in there wherever. If it's too colorful, just call it a psychedelic painting. It's all good. Right? I like it. I'm using every single color that we have. I like the way that looks. You can still tell it's the Devil's Tower back there. Come in again, get our big bit down around the bottom, make our bushes come off the side of this tree, come back, fix our road again. done. It's been an hour and five minutes. Let's get these lines on our road. And take our yardstick. I showed you guys this trick many times. Many, 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 many times. Alright, when our lines in the back to be skinnier, pointier back here, right? Very thin, and the more we come down, the thicker and thicker and thicker they get, right? Just like in real life. Kind of left that bush going over the top of it. It's because I like the way that looked. Take our filbert brush, and with this liquid white, it just erases itself. You know what I mean? Whatever you don't want, just erase it into nothing. Throw that line up there, and we can come back in just like this, guys. Get rid of that sucker. Right? Over here. You know what I always... Maybe i got to get in front of the camera a little bit. Come down. Don't judge me on my lines. <clears throat> they are not the straightest to begin with. Okay, but again, with the liquid white, doesn't matter what it looks like initially, you can always go back in and fix it. And it will just blend itself right away. Okay. 
I like to call this brush our eraser, especially with the liquid white, because you can just literally erase whatever you don't want, clean up those lines, make them nice and straight. Yeah, on this side, i got to cover you guys for a second. You make your lines <clears throat> nice and straight, however you want them. I mean, we'll make a little bit of this fog. Not even me. There we go. However you want to do it. And then you can totally just blend it all the way, and it will just erase itself. Then you could redo the line if you wanted to. Thicker down here, thinner as you go up to the top. We threw some yellow ones in for this one. Get sick and tired of painting the same, same things over and over again. So instead of white, threw some yellow in there. We had it on the palette. We might as well. Right? It even looks like they're maybe too far over to this way. Or do we take our, our line and make it further over that way? Totally up to us. You could add the second line in there if you wanted to, of just straight yellow, that, that straight line that goes in there. But I like the way that that looks. Just kind of fog up our little last one down there. And then bam, you get this wicked colorful painting, uh, this wet on wet technique with the bushes, the way Bob likes to do it with our one inch brush. You could use a fan brush, you can use whatever you want. Um, did our big tree with our foliage, you could have left it bare. I've been leaving a lot of mine bare recently, so. I decided on this one we were going to cover it. And now we'll do our UFO, guys. So you ready? I didn't hear you. Are you ready? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> now, when you do a UFO, right? If you don't want to do the UFO, stop the video right now. Subscribe to my channel. Shop my store, Etsy.com slash shop slash Happy Landscape Art. Check me out on Facebook, at Happy Landscape Art. And find me on Instagram, at Happy Little Landscapes. See you later if you don't want to do the UFO, okay? But for right now... We're gonna go in, we're gonna use our filbert brush and you wanna start small, okay? The UFO likes to grow on you, okay? And I'm not even joking about that. It will grow like crazy. So let's start off small. Let's get a little bit of it on the half of our, of our filbert brush and just decide how big you wanna have it, where you wanna have it sitting. And then we'll just come in and kinda of make this eyeball shape, okay? You only need the filbert brush just to create the base shape. And then, you know, you're not going to be able to make the corners nice and pointy with this filbert brush. And that looks pretty good. I might even just leave it like that. It's real far off in the distance, right? Nobody can tell. It's real far away. It's just a shadow of a UFO. circular or like oval shaped you could have it coming in like it was coming in and you paint the bottom of it it's totally up to you what you want it to look like but again it will grow the more little things you do to it the more it's gonna expand and then you got to change the whole shape of the sucker okay so again 
watch your perspective and be mindful of what it's going to look like. Son of a bee. You know what? We're going to take this guy down this way. Again, it's already grown a good half inch on me from what I wanted it to be. There we go. That's not looking too bad. Now you can put a dome on the top of it. You can put a dome underneath it if you want to. You can have both. Totally up to you what you think the UFO should look like, okay? What I'm going to do now is just kind of either blend or get rid of some of this excess paint that we have in there without going outside of my lines, all right? Don't want to go outside the lines, I'm telling you. Or what? Or what, guys? The UFO will get bigger like we did come out of this little line here. Nobody wants a UFO with bumpy edges. It's got to be nice and smooth, right? Don't have some bumpy edged UFO flying around if you're a believer like me. Oh, don't touch it anymore. All right, maybe one more little, one more little thing. I'm sorry you guys can't really see this. I'm just trying to make a nice, straight, smooth line without having any bumps or humps coming up out of the thing, okay? Again, if you wanted to paint a, UF, uh, a dome on the top, you could just literally put a little dome up there. All right, fill it in. It helps if you're using paint thinner with your colors, okay? That way if you don't like it, it's very easy to blend out and it will fill in all these little holes in your canvas. You guys know what I'm talking about. All these little divots. Right? That's actually looking really good. Pretty good, pretty good. I like that one with the dome. Most of the time I don't like the dome. Don't know why. Don't ask me why. Yeah, I mean it is the most popular one that you see. But when I paint it, it's just I don't like the way that it looks with the dome. Don't don't ask. Okay, we're gonna see what the silver color is all about now. If it was worth Oh, it's like it's like glittery. Glittery paint. I like that. And make our circle around the bottom. And it's going to start blending in with these, this darker color underneath, right? <coughs> I might have put it on the wrong side if all of our light is over here. So we'll come back over here and I'll mix the gray with the purple. Because why not? I can have mine be whatever stinking color I want. I put our purple on the just about the just about three quarters of the sides. It's going to be this kind of purplish grayish color, okay? take our liquid wine and our silver and we'll put it on this side. So it's nice and bright. And again we can pull down you know from the top to make it look like there's panels in the ship. Now, however you want to do it. Whatever you want to do. is kind of blend in with that purple shape, shade, purple shade, just about in the middle, so about halfway, I'm just going to blend those colors together, and that way we'll have this kind of light side and our dark side, right, the dark side, 
love the dark side. Just try not to come out of our black bit that we created, okay? So what you definitely don't want to do is come out of that black area. We'll put a line of silver underneath. Again, this is just me stepping back and seeing something and going, oh shoot, it might look cool with a line of silver right around the edge of the ring. Right? You can put lights on it. And do whatever it is you want to do with yours. But for mine, I think a nice little bit of silver. Maybe there's some panels that come outward. Right, just little things that you guys might not be able to see from back there or from over here. They look pretty cool. Now the dome is always a bit brighter than the rest. So in order to do that, I'm going to put that silver on this shadowy side. And then we'll take some liquid light. And again, we're just making this up as we go along. You guys act like I've, I know what the hell I'm trying to do. Like that, right? of white top shell. So we got a lighter side and we got a darker side. Purple and gray with the silver, silver with the white. Now I'm going into the darkest mixture with some paint thinner and then we'll come in and just create the little details that we want, right? For mine, I want a little bit of a black line around the, that separates the dome from the ship. We'll separate it, and we'll have our, our little panels come out. You can make them all different shapes and sizes if you want. You can put little hier hieroglyphics on there. I've done that in the past. dark, that would be lovely. That needs some thicker paint on there, Josh. God damn it! That's okay. Happy accident. Looks good. I like the way that one looks. I really do. I'm not even. Be, I'm not BSing about that. Just to make that dark line stand out even more, I just want to put. Done, guys. 
I swear. Almost done. Oh, someone's in my Etsy store favoriting some stuff. Get over to Etsy, etsy.com slash shop slash happy landscape art. This painting will be available shortly. Where my problem lies now is my line may not be down far enough. Start growing. <laughs> and you gotta change everything. Yep. Come back in, just kind of very lightly mix that little white line back in there a bit. Because it wasn't down far enough. Our dark area. Gotta have dark and light, right? Gotta have light. Or dark if we're gonna have light. Gotta have. valuable time. Everyone's probably left me already. Boom, baby. Bam. Alright. Not going to play with it anymore. Okay. Alright, that's a lie. Play with it a bit more. This one a little bit brighter over here. silver fading into our little purpley color. Alright, bam. Now we got a light side and we got a dark side. Just kind of mix those two together. Not to ruin our lines. Good to me, guys. Not gonna mess with it anymore. And every time I say that, I see something else I need to fix. You guys don't have these little micro fan brushes or micro liner brushes you should get some they're ridiculously small good for making little details on ufos okay that's it guys i like it that's all that matters is that i like it if i like it someone else is bound to like it we put our little family of birds up here just into the our paint thinner and our liquid, uh, our, our paint thinner and then into our dark black color. Same color that we made all the tree shadows and everything else out of. I'll put my little family flock in here. Go into every painting that I do, me, my wife, my daughter, okay? That's who you're supporting. When you support and buy stuff from me, you're supporting my daughter's little dreams, okay? I'm a full-time artist now. No other job besides you guys, all right? So support my dream. Uh, you know, help me buy more canvases by buying something from my shop. Each sale goes toward buying more canvases so I can come back and make you guys free videos, okay? Come in, sign this sucker down here, maybe. I always just use liquid white when I sign. 
I'm too sick of mixing all these other colors together. So, I like it. Looks good. I like the yellow. I like the UFO. Got the family flock. The clouds look awesome. Got our. You can even still see the dark side of our uh, Devil's Tower. This bit of leaf looks like it almost pushed a bit out. Got super detail in the Devil's Tower back there. It's like we're driving up. And we're gonna they, this UFO is gonna land back behind the forest, and we gotta go find it. Right? Looks really good. I like it. I like the blue in the tree. I like everything. Everything about it, man. I'm gonna take some of the dark. Just this last little bit will make our tree nice and textured on the dark side of the tree. Just by kind of pulling straight sideways. All right. Some of these branches. A little love. And then we're going to take that brown or the dark sienna. We're just going to pull it this way. Kind of meet the two of them in the middle. And bam. Just like so. Give that one some more texture to it. And just like that, guys, got to finish painting. That's not bright enough for you. You can even take in certain areas and just throw some of that uh, yellow ochre. It makes a real cool brownish color when you mix it with the brown. It makes this cool color. A bit of branch, got some life to it. Alright, take the rest. Just kind of cover it all in. Now we got this light side and dark side to our tree. I'm over in some areas, a little bit further over. Just like that. What do you think? Love it. Looks good. Right on. Not too bad. UFO pissed me off a little bit, but <laughs> it always does. Cool. All right, guys. If you like this video, subscribe right down here in the corner. Uh, follow me on Facebook. Search at Happy Landscape Art. Follow me on Instagram at Happy Little Landscapes. And always subscribe right here on YouTube. You guys subscribe on YouTube. I'll put the link in the uh, in the comments. You can click on subscribe. Free videos, two a week, and um, you know, help support me. I, I can only reach so many people. So if you guys can share this post or put it in an art room or a different forum, maybe I'm not in. We can grab more people and bring them to the channel. Right? Need your guys' help. You guys bring the people to the channel. We'll sit here. We'll teach them how to paint and. Uh, hopefully sell some paintings in the interim, right? So etsy.com slash shop slash happy landscape art. Each purchase goes towards buying more of these so I can create more of these, right? We'll get more videos for you guys every week. Two a week, okay? Who else is doing two painting videos a week? Showing you guys how to do these cool scenes, all right? Show me some love, etsy.com slash shop slash happy landscape art. You guys take care, you guys take care, and uh, we'll see you on the next painting. Bow. All right, I'll show you guys some top secret info, okay? And I forgot to do that this time, guys. Roll it. <sighs> See, now you guys are making me nervous. Now you're making me nervous, okay. I usually like snap in the beginning, and then the canvas turns white. Oh, the bloopers, all right. Hey guys, Josh, happy little landscapes. Oh my God. Okay, one more time. Ha <laughs>